We can also investigate uh, how indifference curves look by first introducing a budget uh, constraint. Uh, here we have a very simple world of two goods, A and B. The individual has a given income, say $100, and with the price of A at a certain amount, uh, the individual can buy uh, A1 of uh, good A if, in fact, he's, he or she spends all of his, his or her income on, on good A. The individual can buy B1 of good B if that individual spends all of his, his or her income on, on B. And, of course, uh, by saying that the individual can consume B1, we assume that there is a certain price uh, to B1, and the individual has the same income at B uh, as at uh, A. Now, we can have downward sloping uh, indifference curves that look like, look like this. But would we expect them uh, to look like straight lines and, and cutting the curve in, in this direction? Well, this can be I1, and this can be uh, I2. Well, we know that the individual cannot choose combination A because that's outside of what his, product, his budget will allow. The individual with this indifference curve can only uh, uh, buy on this red line or combination like uh, uh, B. Well, uh, the individual can be expected to move from B to C uh, if, if the preferences look like this. Why? Because we know that D has more of both goods than does uh, B. So D should be preferred to B. C is on the same indifference curve as D, therefore C must be preferred to B. And if the individual is at B, the individual will move to uh, C. Well, we could try an, another uh, combination. And if the combination, if the indifference curve looks like I3, then there is a combination E that the individual will move toward. The reason is, again, is that there is a combination like uh, uh, F. And F should be preferred to C. And E is of equal value to F. Therefore, E is of greater value uh, to B. The moral of the story is that the individual will continue to move down the budget line uh, to where uh, the individual ends up at a combination uh, G. That is, the individual will consume uh, all of B and uh, nothing of A. Now, economists tend to rule out such indifference curves um, uh, simply because we're trying to develop a very simple model of consumer behavior and uh, as represented by two goods, A and, a and B. And consumers are always seen uh, buying a combination of goods. Here, if the indifference curves looked like this, uh, then they wouldn't buy a combination. They'd buy all B and nothing of, of A. So we've got to rule out those kinds of indifference curves. If we were to uh, draw the indifference curves downward sloping like this, um, that is, you have I1 prime, then there's got to be an indifference curve that cuts through here. Uh, I2 prime, uh, whereby the individual is definitely going to move from that point uh, to this combination. Why? Because there's a point here that's preferred uh, to this point, and this is equal value, so this point, A1, has got to be greater than this one. In the previous graphical analysis, uh, we made the demonstration that indifference curves cannot be straight uh, lines. That is, they can't be straight lines if, in fact, the graphical analysis is to describe uh, the typical, typical situation of consumers. That is, a situation in which uh, cons a consumer buys uh, a combination of goods. But what, what about other uh, shapes for the uh, indifference curve? Suppose that the indifference curves are bowed out, like what we have here. Uh, if that is the case, then it's possible that the individual could consume a combination uh, A. Uh, but we know that there is a combination like uh, B that is of greater value to uh, the individual than is A. Uh, B is not uh, attainable because it's outside of the individual's uh, 
uh, budget line. But combination C is attainable. So we know that B is preferred to A. Uh, C is on the same indifference curve as B. So therefore, if B is preferred to A, C is of equal value to B, then C must be of greater value than A. So the individual will move from a combination uh, A to combination uh, C. Well, you can take another combination, uh, D, and we can run an indifference curve uh, through, that, through that point. And we can conclude uh, that E is preferred to C, D is of equal value to uh, E, therefore D has got to be of greater value than, uh, than C, therefore the individual will move to a combination of, of D or will consume uh, only good A. So therefore we have to rule out indifference curves that look uh, like this, that are bowed out uh, from the, from the uh, origin.